Hey YouTubers, I wanted to do a quick video about cutting your uh, Turbo 400 apply pistons using a little, I call, I call it just a bench top, seven by 10 inch lathe that you can uh, buy from Harbor Freight. Um, basically what I'm doing is I'm upgrading the Turbo 400 even further this time, going with six direct clutches, six forward, and four intermediate clutches. Part of this process is making your apply pistons a custom thickness. Um, in my application, looking at, let's see, I have one 1969 Turbo 400 and a 1970 Turbo 400. Both transmissions came with apply pistons that were either 700 thousandths of an inch thick or 750 thousandths thick. Um, if you watch some of the other builders and people like Sean Mountain on Mountain's Garage, he talks about uh, cutting the apply pistons down to 600. Okay, now that's gonna be an arbitrary figure for specific drums and specific clutch stacks to fit six clutches. So that's not something you wanna just jump out and cut them all to 600 thousandths because if your goal was to say, do a heavy duty five clutch stack, and for those of you who aren't familiar with transmission building, that's gonna be five clutches and five 90 thousandths or thicker steels. Okay, so let me just throw this in real quick. The best combination you can have is thick steel clutch stacks. So the more thick steels you can use, the better, because they are a better heat sink. They handle the heat better, dissipate it without warping. Unfortunately, when you're using factory drums, you can't really fit all thick steels and still get six clutches in there. So what you'll do, as an example, if you're gonna do a heavy duty five clutch stack, which would be five clutch discs and five 90 thousandths or bigger steels, you can get by with cutting your apply piston to about uh, 650 to 660 thousandths thick. And that will handle a you know, thousand plus horsepower. I'm not saying you ever have to put six clutches in your transmission. I'm just telling you that a heavy duty five clutch stack will handle well over a thousand horsepower if it's set up properly with the right clearances. Um, on my particular application, I am putting six clutches in my forward drum and running, uh, let's see, six 80 thousandths clutch uh, discs, and then I'm running six 78,000 steels. Now to make that fit and to still get my 60,000 clearance I'm shooting for, my apply piston needs to be 600,000 thick. Okay, so that's gonna apply to my application with a, let's see, 1970 forward drum. I'm taking the factory piston and cutting it from 750,000 down to 600 thousandths in order to put in that six clutch stack. So let me just show you what I do on here. <clears throat> now I don't, you can't take off a ton of material all at one time because this is just a small uh, mini lathe that you buy at Harbor Freight. But what I've been doing, is what, you, what I do, I like to cut from the outside in you can actually go either direction and it's not gonna be a big deal. But what I do is I bring it up, get it somewhere in that face, and I'll use the main crank. This is the main crank, forward, forward and back. I'll just come up till the cutter touches the work or the piece, stop, then I will back it off. That's called a touch off. I'm touching off from the work surface now I'm going to add this, this little crank over here on the end. 
this crank is what does your forward in one thousandths of an inch increments. So what I want to do is I want to take off 25 thousandths on this pass. So I will turn this to 25 thousandths of an inch. This is supposed to be a guy a guard, but it gets in the way of the camera. So I'm just gonna pull that down. So I just wanna show you how this works. I don't wanna bore you with it, but what I'll have to do is take off 25 thousandths per pass until I get closer to the 600 thousandths thickness. Then I'll go to smaller passes and cut slower so I can dial it in. So the way this thing works, you gotta, you gotta power it up. Then you have to let the motor come on. And what I've found is you're better off not to turn this very fast. You do wanna have the mini lathe in low range. And what I do, what I was doing, sounds crazy, but I turned it up until the motor, until everything sounds a little clattery. And then I back her down to about right there. It's a nice, even RPM. I do not know what RPM that is, but that's where I've been cutting at. And then I just slowly will take this handle and start cutting, guys. I'm not gonna sit here and make you guys listen because it squeals, it makes quite a bit of noise. It has a loud pitch to it while it's cutting because it echoes through that aluminum. But that's what I'll do is I'll just start 25 thousandths at a time, knock off four or five passes. You know, of course you can stop and measure it at any time on the lathe. Just remember when you mount this, when you mount this on this head or this lathe, you have to get it flat as you can possibly get it so that this can be an accurate cut. And you will fight with it. I mean, you have to play with it and you have to slowly tighten your, your this is how you tighten and loosen the jaws, but you will have to hold it as flat and flush as you can and just barely snug it, pull your tool off, Turn it on, check it, check it. And once you're comfortable with the straight, you know, the plumb straightness, whatever, have it spinning true, then you just kind of gently snug it down. Don't go crazy, because if you turn this adjuster too tight, it'll spit this thing off. I mean, this lathe is small, and those little jaws barely kind of, you know, grab that inner diameter on this supply piston. So if you start getting crazy with it, it's gonna probably go crooked. But I just wanted you guys to see how I was cutting these apply pistons using this, you know, borrowed, relatively inexpensive Harbor Freight mini lathe, and it's working perfect. I mean, you know, you can only take off 25 thousandths at a time, but it does a good job. Everything's been accurate, and I just wanted to share that with you. We got her cut down. Get this thing pulled off of here. So basically, I've cut this applied piston from 750 down to 598 thousandths. Okay, 598, just a hair under 600. And that's probably because. 
I tried my best to dial this thing into exactly 13 thousandths cut, and it did 15 thousandths. So keep that in mind. When you're using these little mini laves, you got to sneak up on it. And when you get down close to the width or thickness that you want, take small bites. Don't get too carried away. So what I'm going to do is make sure there's no pieces in here. So what I'm doing is this is my forward applied piston that does not have a check valve. Like if you'll see right here, there's a little spot where there could be a check valve, but the factory didn't drill it all the way through and put a, valve, a check ball in there. So this is my forward applied piston. Let's move over here to the forward drum so I can show you what I'm doing here. All right, so you don't need any seals on here just to do your measuring. So you drop her down, start loading your, start loading your clutch stack in here. This is always a game to me. Once you get the, get them going, they go pretty good. One, I've got a big old cut on my thumb. It's kicking my butt today. Two. Three. Four. That damn cut kicking my butt again. Six clutches, and if any of you've watched any of the videos, let me zoom in real quick because I think it'll help. Okay guys, when you're setting up these clutch packs and you're trying to get some clearance, if you'll look right here, there's a step or a ledge. If you can get your last clutch whether it be four clutch stack, five clutch stack, six clutch stack, whatever, when you put that clutch in there, if it sets equal to, and this is without even using feeler gauges or anything, this is just a visual representation. Right here, there is a beveled edge, like you'll have the flat part of your lug, and that bottom receiver groove right there has like a beveled edge to it. When you put your clutch plate in, if the top of that clutch plate is equal to, and I mean dead equal to the bottom of that bevel, you're gonna have about 50 thousandths clearance on your clutch pack. So when I drop this in there, I push it up against the wall, you can see that bevel. It looks shiny. That little beveled edge, if I was at the very bottom of that bevel, would be about 50 thousandths clearance. Well, since I have a six clutch pack, my goal is 60 to 70 thousandths clearance. So I will measure it, but I'm just showing you guys a quick way that once you build your transmissions and you start getting more familiar with it, you can actually assemble these things and you'll know about how much clutch pack clearance you have just based on where this final clutch sits in the drum, okay? So that's just kind of like a little tip or like a cheat. But what I'm looking for is 60 to 70 thousandths, so I'm trying to hit just below it. You're looking at about eight to ten thousandths, hopefully. I've done this correctly. Where you can see, I'm hitting steel below the bevel. I'm hitting steel below the bevel. So I should, knock on wood, 
be really close to what I need, but let's find out. Okay guys, so here's how you measure your actual clutch pack clearance. Number one, you don't put this on there because you cannot reach in there and measure the clutch pack clearance. Even when you're doing a direct drum, you never put the pressure plate on and try to measure your clutch pack clearance because all you do is end up tearing up and scratching up your clutch disc and you can't even get in there to get an accurate measurement. Not sure who came up with that idea, but just follow along. What we're gonna do, or what I've done already, install your snap ring. This is the snap ring that would hold the forward pressure plate on. Number one, we're gonna put our snap ring in the drum. Number two, we're gonna measure this pressure plate. It's 160 thousandths thick, okay? Keep that in mind, write it down if you have to. What I've done to save time is I made a feeler gauge stack that's 204 thousandths thick, okay? So now, what you do to measure your clutch back clearance and not damage, you're gonna get a more accurate measurement and you're not gonna damage or scratch up your clutch disc, clutch plate. Some people are very sensitive about the terms. But what you do, what I've found, is a 21 thousandths. So I put a little bit of pressure opposite of where I'm measuring so we don't get any clutch pack rock and what I'll do is I'll just push down hard enough to slide this in, boom, all right? So now we know that my clutch pack clearance is gonna be that total distance from the clutch disc to the bottom of the snap ring, what? Minus the thickness of the pressure plate. So if we have 204, plus 21, what does that give us? 225 thousandths space, we'll call it, between the clutch disc, clutch plate, and the snap ring, 225 minus 160, voila, there's your cl clutch clearance. Sorry about that, I had to take a small break. But, back to where we were, don't wanna confuse anybody. So what we've done to do our six clutch stack to fit in a 1970 Turbo 400 forward drum, and the reason I bring up the year and the uh, drum is that not all drums are made the same. They will, of course, have the same spacing on the lugs in the drum, but they have different depths. Not all drums are created equal. Uh, you've got the older, the newer, you've got the 4L80E, which I will be using next time on my direct drum. But, live and learn, those new fangled uh, transmission parts you can use. But, in this application, I wanna make sure you understand this is not a generic number. This is not stuff I'm telling anybody to do without verifying their drum and their clutch stack that they're trying to put in because all this has to kind of go together, okay? So this 1970 forward drum, I was able to fit a six clutch stack. Now this particular stack is six 80 thousandths. They're they actually measure closer to 83 thousandths, but they'll break in some. But it's really considered like an eight, 80 to 83 thousandths clutch disc. And I have six of the discs, and I've got six 78 thousandths steels. So they're not thin steels, but they're also not the 90 and above steels. Because when you talk to a transmission builder, when they talk about thick steels, generally they're gonna be referring to a 90 thousandths or thicker steel. And those are the best, I'm not gonna to lie to you, but these factory turbo 400 drums 
you just cannot fit six thick steels in here and make everything fit with the proper clearance. So you have to kind of accept the fact that you can run a 78 thousandths, which is a good, you know, a decent thickness steel and get six clutches in your forward drum. But I digress. So rather than try to scratch up and do something goofy, what we've done is put our six clutch stack in, installed our re uh, retainer snap ring, used just the old school feeler gauges to determine that from the clutch disc to the bottom of the snap ring, I have a free space of 225 thousandths. When I subtract the 160 thousandths of this uh, forward pressure plate means I have 65 thousandths clearance. Okay, a while ago, I think I mentioned, I hope I did, that my goal for this clutch stack was 60 to 70 thousandths. Okay, 65 thousandths came out perfect for me because I previously, previously have measured this application and I knew I had to have a, a uh, this is this aluminum piece is called the apply piston. I knew I had to have my apply piston at 600 thousandths or slightly below to be in the clearance range that I needed, okay? So I used a cheap, relatively cheap, I say that with an asterisk because it's not, you know, three or four hundred dollars is expensive to most people. But I used a mini lathe to uh, machine my own apply pistons, both for my forward and my direct. The direct will be a different video. This apply piston ended up 598 thousandths thick, six clutch stack with 65 thousandths clearance. So I just wanted to do a video on this tonight while I was working on the lathe finalizing my cr my clutch stack and clearances on this particular part of the rebuild. Um, hopefully this isn't boring for you and it'll kind of help you if you're going to be building transmissions or just jumping in and trying to upgrade the one you have. Uh, that's where I'm at. I'm going to make a more comprehensive video coming up that kind of explains the t what I found after the teardown of my Turbo 400, uh, burning up the forward clutches, and you'll be surprised what the cause was and how rare a failure of that type could be. So thanks a lot, thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully this is somewhat informative with a little bit of detail so you guys can get out there and get this stuff done yourself. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share.